In this video, I will show you how to use z-scores to find the percentage of data below a particular value. So here's our example. The mean weight of adult men is 172 pounds, with a standard deviation of 29 pounds. What percent of men weigh less than 200 pounds? So to organize our work, let's make these two sketches of a generic bell curve. Um, on this side, we're going to go ahead and do pounds. On this side, we'll, we will do z-score. So the mean weight is 172 pounds, so we'll go ahead and put 172 right here. The mean for a z-score is always zero, so we'll put zero right there. Now the weight we're interested in is 200 pounds. That's greater than 172, so I will mark it over here on the right-hand side. All right, 200. And uh, I'll make a similar mark on the z-score side, but I'm going to have to find out what this number is in a minute. What percentage of men weigh less than 200? So I'm interested in this part of the graph that's going to the left. Okay, less than 200 pounds. And you know what? So that'll correspond to the same situation on the z-score diagram. All right, so some of these numbers will be different between the pounds and the z-score, but the percentages will be the same. That's why this is so useful. Now, we need to find the z-score for 200 pounds in this scenario. So we will use the formula that looks like this. We can find the z-score by taking any value, subtracting the mean, and dividing by the standard deviation. So in this case, that would be 200 minus 172. Uh, divided by, and the standard deviation was 29. So let's just put that in the calculator, like so. Um, we really need the decimal version of this. I'm going to toggle it. So I'm going to round to the nearest two decimal places always for z-score, very important. So I really need to cut this, like right here. Now. Um, it's important that we round appropriately. So remember, if the next number is five or greater, then we need to round this number up. So that's why in the end, we're gonna have 0 0.97. Gotta round up. All right, of course, that's really close to one. So that's about one standard deviation. Um, this is about one standard deviation above the mean. So let's go ahead and put this 0 0.97 on our z-score picture. Now, because this is not exactly one standard deviation, we can't use our empirical rule where we learned about the, uh, the 68, 95, 99.7 rule which is in a previous video. Um, that only works when we have even standard deviations like one, two, three, et cetera. So for this, we're gonna need a z-score table. So you're gonna need one of these. So if you don't have a z-score table, uh, Google this and get yourself one. Anyway, so um, we can use a z-score table to find the percentage of values to the left of any z-score. Um, and so we want the left, so we should be able to read the percentages right off this chart. If you ever wanted the percentage of values going to the right, you would have to subtract from 100. But we don't need to do that for this video. So we just need to find 0 0.97. So start with the 0 0.9 part. So looking at this column in the far left, I'm looking for 0 0.9. So here's 0 0.9 right here. Now the 7, well here's the 7 column, so that's going to be right here. So that means 
Okay, so that means the percentage of values less than 0 0.97 was, again, 83.4%. Okay, so look, if this is 83.4% of the data, then that means this is also 83.4% of the data. So in this last box, we're just going to write this out as a complete sentence. Really, anytime you're going to answer a real world question where you have a context and it's not just solving an equation, your answer shouldn't just be a number. It should be a sentence answering the question. So, uh, let's see, 83.4%, uh, I thought I was typing. Let me try that again. 83.4% of men weigh less than 200 pounds. Okay, um, so if I wanted to know how, uh, what percent of men weigh more than 200 pounds, I would just subtract this from 100. Okay, so that would be like 85.6 or something like that. All right, I hope this was helpful. I will see you on the next video.